up until now, we've primarily covered command line utilities and concepts for the Linux operating systems. We'd like to take a few moments and discuss some of the X windows or graphical components to the Linux operating system. So we'll cover the installing and configuration of XFree86, which is actually a manager environment for a graphical interface. And we'll talk a little bit about window managers for those Linux desktops. So just a brief overview of XFree86. It's basically a free version or public license version of X Windows. It provides us with a graphical interface, a point and click interface, if you will, and is not specifically built for any one operating system. Most distributions come with XFree86 installed by default. Now a lot of people call it X for short, for example, and it actually uses a client server model. What that means to us is that the server is running in the background of the system and allows for multiple X sessions to be running both remotely and locally. So it allows for some flexibility that you might not have with a single model environment. Now there are basically two versions of X. We've got our three and our four versions. And they basically have different components built into them for speed and performance, uh, different features that you might see. There are two configuration files that you will use to change the setup or the functionality of X. We've got our version 3 configuration file and our version 4 configuration file. And this basically allows you to change settings such as drivers, fonts, and display options uh, commonly used to change your resolution and your color modes as well. Now, there are a couple of different tools that come along with the X386. And the first of which is the XF86 config, which is a text-based command line, if you will, configuration utility. We also have our XF86 setup, which if it already hasn't been configured, this will allow you to go in and make the configuration changes. And finally, our XF86 CFG, or config, will allow us to use a graphical version of XF86 config to configure our X environment. Now Red Hat has its own tool called the X configurator that will allow you to go in and make changes to the graphical environment. In addition, other distributions such as SUS might have proprietary type X configuration utilities. SAX2 is a good example of what SUS would use. Now normally, if you're running in run level 5 or higher, you have the ability to automatically start the X Windows environment. If it doesn't start for you, you can use Start X. If that fails, then you actually want to go into the configuration utilities or files and make changes. As you can see on a Red Hat environment here, we're already in the X environment. So we're going to log into our system real quick. And you'll notice that my resolution is really too large for the screen that I'm using. So as it initializes itself, you'll notice that I'll have to scroll up or left to right in order to actually get the full view of the screen. So we're going to solve that problem by editing our configuration file and then rebooting our system to see if we can change that resolution. I'm going to go ahead and accelerate time a little bit and let it initialize the desktop and then we'll actually go ahead and look at the configuration file. Alright, so at this point our desktop's been initialized and we want to go make those configuration changes. So we're going to navigate down to the root of the file system. And that configuration file is actually going to be located in the etc directory under x11. And as you can see here, there's our config-4 file. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. And let's take a look at the current configuration for, there you go. 
Right now we're configured to 10, 24 by 768. So we're going to go with a 640 by 480. I'm going to go ahead and open that so that we can make changes to it. 